Hey guys, Andy back here from Mediocre Hobbies, bringing you another episode of Middle Earth Monday. That was a mouthful. So we are continuing on our videos on Pelennor Fields. Last week we did an Army of the Dead, and this week we are tackling the Witch King on Fell Beast. Quite an epic piece, but he's actually quite a simplistic piece, to be honest. It's a guy in black robes wearing dark steel armor, riding a black mount. It's there's not really a lot to it, so I'm going to try and make the wings a little bit more interesting. Whether or not I pull that off or not, you guys can let me know in the comments below. Um, if I was doing this for my own personal hobby, I probably would have got in with an airbrush for the wings, but as I am always trying to make this as accessible as possible for as many people as possible, I try and leave the fancy tools out of it. So hopefully uh, you guys get something out of this and you like the results that I achieve by the end of the video. As usual, before we get into the video, I just want to say a huge thank you to all of my active patrons. Without you guys, I would not be able to keep the lights on and the cameras rolling. If you're interested in getting involved with that, the benefits are a private Discord server where you can hang out with me on a daily basis talking about your hobby. And we get involved with like painting competitions and showcases and stuff like that there as well. And also you get an extra video every single week. So that's 52 extra videos a year just for you guys. So if that's interesting you, Links below. Okay, without further ado, let's paint a Witch King on Fell Beast. Okay, out of all of the miniatures from the Pelnor Fields box set, this guy seems like the most intimidating, but he's actually one of the easiest miniatures to paint, at least to get a nice tabletop standard, something you would be proud to put on, on basically the game in surface and play with. Um, we're not looking for crazy competition standard here. If I was going for a crazy competition model, I probably wouldn't pick this miniature. <laughs> So I got the model sprayed black and then sprayed gray sear like I normally do. It's giving me a nice bright coat to start from when using contrast. And then I actually used Rattling Grime for all of the skin of the Fell Beast. If you pay attention in the movie, it is not a, a black beast in the movies. Um, it's definitely not jet black. Rattling Grime is somewhere between a black and a brown. It's a really nice color and it will work a treat for doing this stage of the miniature. So all I'm going to do is take my time and paint Rattling Grime across the entire model, including the membranes on the wings, but not the flat surface of the wings. If you get a little bit of Rattling Grime around the edges, totally fine, not a big deal. But most of the center of the wings we want to keep in that white color so that we can then hit it with Agarose Dunes. Now the inside of the wings, the bit we're about to paint here, is the most complicated part of painting this beast. And that's actually going to be a couple of different colors and coats. Because once again, if you look at the reference material, so picture this guy from the movie, you'll see that it's oh, it's like a weird kind of pale leather skin style thing. It's a very mottled complexion um, and it's kind of an awkward one to paint. So in order to kind of get somewhat close to that result, we're going to do a couple of different layers just to build up the, the kind of look of it. So most of these are going to be very ugly stages. Uh, it's not going to look good until you basically put that last coat of paint on and then you can tell me whether or not we pulled it all together. But for now, trust the process. Black Templar was then applied to all of the scales of the beast. So as you can see, I'm going to leave the soft skin of the model in that rattling grime. But then where his scales would be a little bit more armoured, a little bit tougher, we're going to go back in with Black Templar and we're going to apply this all over those sections. We are also going to take our time and apply this all over the Witch King himself. His big jet black robes are of course going to go a nice black scheme. And I know what you're thinking, if you're at the, this point in the video, you're like, this model is going to be ugly as all hell because it looks so horrible right now. I know it does, I feel the same. I was a little bit nervous at this point as well, but uh, I always try and trust my gut and follow through with the paint job to see what it's gonna look like at the end. A bit of Volopus Pink was used to paint the inside of his mouth and tongue. This is once again just adds that little extra touch of color. We also threw a dark brown contrast on the um, reins. And then it was time to go to Iron Hand Steel and apply this all the metallic parts. Obviously the armored Witch King, which is the one mounted here. He has donned his armor to act as the general of Mordor and lead the forces against Minas Tirith, the White City. So he does have quite a bit more metallic on him than normal. So obviously the, the fell beast himself gets armored up. And then the Witch King has his big beautiful crown. He's got armored uh, feet, hands, forearms. The sword, of course, gets all silver. So you just want to take your time, make sure that you can pick the metallic parts out from the um, cloth of his robes. From here, it's time to shade the miniature. For this, we're going to go for Nuln Oil. 
and apply this over the entire miniature, every single part. The Witch King, his sword, the beast, the wings, all the metallics, even the mouth, all of it. Get it in with a coat of known oil. This will be a quick and easy to achieve coat. It will help pull all those colors together, darken down those wings a little bit. Help tie them together. Sorry about the camera quality in this particular video. It was an absolute nightmare to record as I glued the entire miniature together. So every time I was painting something, there was another part of the miniature that was closer to the camera, like the tip of a wing or the tail or the base, which of course the camera then immediately tried to focus on. So trying to make that work and also get the shots that I wanted was not easy. After the known oil was dry, we were at this stage. Once again, it's still time to work up that skin on the wing. So I went for a Rackard flesh and went for kind of like a heavy feathering. Basically just like a heavy dry brush, but only going in a downward direction down the wings. And all we're trying to do is add a little bit of brightness to the center of those wings. We're not trying to get it all over it. And as you can see, the paint transfer is very light. So you want to just basically keep going over and over and over again until you start to build up a little bit of color on the wings. And once that's applied, you can see that the wings are quite pale. And all we're going to do is hit that again with a Seraphim Sepia shade. You can go as thick or as light as you want with this to get your desired effect. Once again, it's to make it feel like it's an alive thing. Whereas if you actually if you grab something like a bat, for instance, and spread his wings out, it would look something like this. Really pale, really mottled. You can definitely tell there's a bit of life to it, but uh, nothing crazy. After that, to get a little bit of uh, fiery technique on the on the the sword himself. All I did was grab an R yellow and an orange contrast. I put a coat of yellow contrast over the entire thing. And then I didn't even wait for it to dry. I just grabbed some orange contrast and hit it with the tips. You could take this further and make this more complicated. It's up to you. I always figured when I painted my Witch King on Felbeast, I would painting the previous version of him, the old metal version where he's like standing upright. That's one of my favorite miniatures ever. So I don't actually have an awful lot of love for this miniature. So I'm trying to give you a simple uh, a way of getting through this miniature so that I'm still going to be here with a little bit of excitement to paint my other version of him where I might put a little bit more time in with his flaming sword or his mace. A bit of Pali Witch Fest was used for his teeth. You can see a little bit now the kind of layers that went into the wing when it's this zoomed in. It does not look fantastic, but when you put it down on a tabletop and look at it as one whole piece, I think it looks really nice. I did a couple of other touch-ups. I obviously picked out a different pink color for the tongue. Um, and, but other than that, painting his teeth and tongue, I based the miniature and then I pretty much called it there. This is my painted Witch King on Felbeast miniature. My favorite thing about Lord of the Rings miniatures is they are not that complicated to paint. This guy is essentially only three colors, the black, the skin color, and silver. So it takes a very short amount of time to get it to a nice tabletop standard and something I would be proud enough to put on a tabletop. Once again, please let me know in the comments below if you think I did a good job on this or whether I ruined it. <laughs> Okay guys, and there we have it. One Witch King on Felbeast painted up fairly quickly to a simple tabletop standard that I would be more than happy to field and play games with. Hope you guys liked the result. If you did, let me know in the comments below. I will get back to each and every one of you in the comments who does message me. I like the video if you did enjoy it. And if you're not already subscribed to my channel, please take two seconds out of your day and hit that subscribe button. It really does make a huge difference. Thank you for sticking around to the end of the video. I'll see you in the next one.